are here at the airport, guys. Been a while since I've made a video. Been a while since I've been on the paramotor and made a video. Um, but I actually have some pretty crazy news this morning. Um, and I made the video yesterday, actually, but I forgot to plug in the audio cable, so I just talked to myself for a half an hour while I was flying, so. <laughs> But as you can tell by the title of the video, um, I don't know what I titled it, something catchy, something to get you to click on it, I'm sure. Um, but I had to sell one of my aircraft um, and the guy that is buying it is on his way here right now to look at it. So I'm gonna get set up, get in the air, and we'll tell you the story behind all that and uh, which one I'm getting rid of. So see you guys in a bit. It's a nice uh, westerly wind here. I want to go that way and explore that side of the lake, but not if it's this strong a wind. I can't, I might even be. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> if I turn into it, I'm perfectly stationary. I'm going to have to descend. I can't penetrate at all, and I don't have my speed bar. Here's the backstory. I got a guy coming here today from Florida to look at my airplane. Um, I decided it's time to sell it and uh, move on, move up, on to the next chapter of my uh, aviation story, I guess. Um, so you guys know I bought my Cessna 150 about a year ago, uh, and I bought that with the intention of getting my private pilot certificate and learning to fly and building hours. Um, and it did both those things perfectly. I've owned it for a year, and I'm ready to start learning some IFR. My mission is changing. I'd like to be able to take my wife and my boys up with me. Um, so I can't do that in the 150, so I'm gonna maybe step my way up and get a little bit of an upgrade. I'm looking, looking to get something that's IFR capable and certified. Um, and not just capable, but um, something that I can actually fly IFR in, because I can train IFR in that 150. Um, but it's not certified, so I technically can't fly it after I get my IFR certification, so I wouldn't be able to stay current. And even if I were to spend the money on getting a DME and a couple other things inside the airplane, uh, it just wouldn't be a, a safe IFR machine. It'd be like a day where if I had low visibility at the airport, clear skies, I could use my IFR certification and the plane's IFR certification to get up and into that clear air, but I want to be able to actually fly approaches and um, be able to fly some actual IFR. So that's the goal. Wow, man, I can't believe how strong this wind is up here. I'm literally not moving. Fully trimmed out. This sucks. I wanted to fly all morning, and I'm not going to do that. So the other day, I decided to throw the airplane up on, on a Facebook uh, like airplane for sale pages. And in the ad, I even said, I was like, airplane not available until uh, mid-August, because there's some squawks with the airplane. Um, the transponder needed to be replaced, which I was going to have replaced, uh, actually, in two days, I was gonna drop the airplane off at the avionics shop today. Um, obviously, I'm not doing that. And uh, the vacuum pump just went out, so I gotta replace the vacuum pump. Uh, what else is wrong with it? Oh, and the flap indicator cable is jammed. So, there's a couple small things I needed to get fixed on it that I wanted to get fixed, and I wanted to annual the airplane. I have an annual due in August. So I wanted to go through the annual inspection and um, just make sure that I'm giving somebody a good airplane, right? I wanted to be able to say, look, here's a fresh annual, uh, everything's fixed, no squawks, and then I could, you know, sell it, knowing I'm giving somebody a good aircraft. However, I put it up on the for sale pages and it, it sold in like 24 hours. I got a line of people that want to buy this airplane for about my asking price and they want it before I annual it. So 
um, they're saving me thousands of dollars by taking it before I have to annual it. They say, oh, we'll annual it. I got a mechanic that'll do it. Okay, whatever you want. So that's the story. I got a guy coming up uh, today to look at it. Like I said, flying in from Florida. Um, hopefully everything goes well. Take them up for a quick flight, show them the plane. They want to go through it. They want to pull the oil screen, double check everything. And then potentially he's going to fly it home. So I wasn't expecting it to go that fast. I wanted to fly it to Moonshiners potentially, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. But uh, that's not, likely not going to happen. This guy ends up buying it, of course. So, yeah, man, it's uh, it happened quick. Like I said, I, I came to the airport yesterday and took it for a flight around the lake just to uh, make sure nothing else creeped up while it was sitting for a week. Make sure when the guy arrived, I could say, look, I flew it yesterday, it flew fine. Um, check everything out, and I made a video while I was doing that. But I didn't plug in the audio cable. I plugged it into the GoPro, forgot to plug it into the intercom, so no audio. So anyway, that's that. Um, kind of bummed, but I'll tell you what, man. I bought that plane a year ago while it was in annual, so I didn't pay for that annual inspection. I have put about $2,000 worth of maintenance into that airplane. And that's max. That's max in a year. Um, obviously, fuel costs. And then, I'm just going to glide down now and try to penetrate a little bit more. Um, and that's really all I've done. And now I'm selling the airplane for a profit. Not, not a large profit, but more than I paid for it. And I flew it for about 200 hours, just shy of 200 hours. So that's exactly what I wanted to do. I'm really happy with that, um, especially when I calculate how much money it would have cost me to rent a plane. You so there are no 150s for rents in this area, so I'd have to be renting a 172. That's, they have nicer airplanes, obviously, but the cheapest plane around here to rent is a 172 to build hours. Actually, now that I'm saying that, I think there's a 150 here. Anyway, the cost of renting an airplane it, uh, would have cost me between fifteen and twenty thousand um, dollars to build this many hours. Maybe a little bit more. It was fifteen thousand, I think, at the point where I have my license. So it, it could be more. I did do the calculations, but it's substantial. Way, way more than I have spent um, in the year I've owned this airplane. That's why I've always said renting is if you could if you can do it is a thousand times better than, than buying an airplane uh, for learning how to fly that is. So if you, if you have the means to do that and you can make it happen, um, definitely the way to go. Also, you can finance airplanes at a, uh, a pretty good rate. Um, I didn't end up having to finance this 150, but um, you, could, you could finance a plane and I think the money you spend on interest would still be far less than you would uh, spend renting an aircraft. Actually, I know it would be. So. That's the story. Really happy with the way everything turned out. Kind of sad to see the airplane go, if I'm honest. Now noticing this camera's upside down. But um, like I said, on to, on to the next one, right? So yeah, if any of you guys got a uh, four-seater IFR-capable airplane for a reasonable price, let me know. Currently looking at the Cherokee family. Um, for whatever reason, the uh, Piper Cherokee family of aircraft are, are much more affordable than Cessnas. Uh, like the next step up from my airplane with four seats is the Cessna 172. And um, those just go for a premium for what seems to be no reason. I think maybe they're just a high demand for them for flight schools potentially, but yeah, it just costs a lot more money to get into one of those than it does a Piper, so that's why I'm looking for Pipers. Also, low wings are cool. more hours on the paramotor now. Got lucky this morning, man. This guy's showing up around 9, 10 o'clock. Weather looked perfect this morning. Obviously forgot to check the winds aloft. <laughs> but dead calm on the ground, man. Dead calm. So just got to keep an eye on that. Make sure it doesn't pick up. Make sure I can get back. If not, I'll land right here. Call us over. Come get me. No big deal. Alright guys, like I said, this guy should be here in a few hours. Um, when he gets here, I'll uh, maybe film some of the process of selling the aircraft. This guy is down to be on camera. And uh, I know he's going to want to go for a flight, so I'm going to end up taking him up. And um, 
maybe his mechanic, I don't know, and uh, maybe I'll film that. So I'll save the camera batteries until then, and I'll catch you guys when I land. Peace. has been made November 17048 it's no longer mine the second you transfer money and you fill out the uh, bill of sale from the FAA technically it is his he owns it um, and that has happened so it's no longer my airplane they're about to fly away with it definitely bittersweet but happy with the deal I got on it happy everything worked out and um, on to the next thing man so they're not gonna take off for a while so unfortunately I won't be able to watch it fly away they're gonna get some food and I gotta get home because I got family stuff today, but stay tuned if you guys wanna find out what's next. I don't even know, but we'll figure it out. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, all that jazz. You guys know the deal, and uh, catch you guys in the next one. Peace.